So this is the second part of the solutions to our study guide for our chapter one test. We left off at question five and we're given a function which is piecewise defined and we're asked to sketch the graph of it. So let me start with my axes. Let me look ahead here and look at the different parts. I'm going to have four different parts. My x values are going to go from some negative values past four and I will have an asymptote. So let me go ahead and make my y-axis right here and then my x-axis How that works out. Putting it right here. Some arrows. And make sure I label them Y and X. I'm going to use one unit per square. Put in a few more here. All right, and I'm going to try to use different colors for each one of the branches. My first branch is a negative x squared plus four. That is if x is less than zero. So no equals to part here. So at zero, uh, so it would be zero comma four. So let me go ahead and put in a few more points there. At zero comma four, I'll have an open circle. Negative x squared plus four is a parabola. And so I am going to have half the parabola, only the half of the parabola, on which is to the left of zero. And so something like that. All right, so that is my first branch. Let's try the second branch. It's going between zero and two. And I'll use red for that. It's a line, four minus x. So y equals four minus x. That has uh, a y-intercept at zero comma four. And I do have the equals two parts. So I will shade my dot there at zero. At two, it'll be an open dot. Slope is negative one. Four minus x, the slope is negative one. So I would go down one, one to the right, until I get to x equals two, where I will have an open circle. So that's my second branch. The third branch is another line. Its slope is positive one. I'm going to have solid circles drawn at two x equals two and x equals four. So when x equals two, uh, y would be two minus three, negative one. So I need to come down here at when x equals two and y equals negative one. And then I go over to uh, x equals four going to have a slope of positive one. So when x equals four, y will equal one. And so I have a line segment with slope equals one. And then finally, the last branch is going to be half of this reciprocal function, one over 
x minus 4. So when x equals 4, this would not be defined. Uh, this branch is not defined. In fact, I would have a asymptote there. So let me put in an asymptote. Just a nice thin dashed line here. x equals 4. Actually, let me make that thinner. Take out some of the parts to make it a thin dashed line. Now, when I know that when x is to the right of positive 4, 1 over x minus 4 is going to be a positive number. Um, just to get a little bit more accurate graph, I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, 5 here for x. So 1 over 5 minus 4 is going to give me 1. So I know it's going to pass through this point. And so I'm going to have... Oops. Something that's not as beautiful as I would have liked. But it looks something like this. Still working on how to draw graphs using this uh, tablet, but it's something. And maybe I can clean it up a little bit using a smaller eraser. All right, not bad. Let us answer the questions. Now we've sketched the graph of f of x. So here we have y equals f of x. It has four different parts, half a parabola, two line segments, and then half of a reciprocal function. And so the question is for the values, x values, x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 4, determine if f is continuous from the left, continuous from the right, or continuous at that number. And so we'll go over here, part B, x equals 0. The left limit is the same as the right limit, and the function value is defined at that point. And so the function at x equals 0 is continuous, implying that it's continuous from the left and also continuous from the right. At x equals 2, we have a jump discontinuity. So it's not continuous. If I come from the left, I approach the value positive 2, but the function value is down here at negative 1. And I know that because I have an open circle at 2 when y equals 2, but there's a closed circle when y equals negative 1. So it's continuous from the right. at x equals 2, but not from the left. And at x equals 4, as we approach it from the right, the limit is positive infinity. Uh, so it can't be continuous from the right. However, when I approach from the left, I see that I approach the y-coordinate approaches 1, which is where the function is defined, f of 4 equals 1. So it is continuous from the left.
So on what intervals is F continuous? Well, F is continuous on, well, we can go as far to the left as we want. It'll still be continuous. We'll be using this formula for the parabola. So that is a continuous function. So starting from negative infinity, yes, even at zero, it's still continuous all the way up to, but not including, positive 2. So I don't include positive 2. I use a rounded parenthesis when I'm using interval notation. And I forgot a t. It's also continuous starting from uh, negative 2 over to let me try negative two, positive two to positive four. And we can include, oops, I'm sorry. It's only continuous on one side of uh, two and one side of four. So I had better make that a parenthesis. And then, um, we have to omit 4, but then from 4 going to the right uh, forever, we have a rational function, which, and all of those values to the right of 4 are in the domain. And so from 4 to infinity, the function is continuous. Let's take a look at our next question. All right, so we're given two continuous functions. We know that the, the function value at three for f, the function value we don't know for g, we're trying to find that. Uh, but we do have that the limit as x approaches three of quantity g of x minus two f of x equals negative two. Well, since these are continuous functions, I can expand this limit as x approaches three of quantity g of x minus 2 f of x by using direct substitution. That would just be g evaluated at 3 minus 2 times f of 3. And what am I told? I am told that that equals negative 2. So now I've got a, well, if I combine that with, given that f of 3 is 20, I'll just have a little equation that I can solve for g of 3. So this would say that g of 3 minus 40 equals negative 2. So g of 3 would have to equal 38. 